hi guys this is Dario with another video so just in case you missed the sketching process of this particular uh, video um, I'll be dropping the link at the top right corner and also at the end of this video so that you can go and check it out um, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to sheet basically sheet using um, uh, monochrome like I'm going to be showing you how to sheet um, does um black and white so yeah just do well to stick around so let's proceed so the first of all we are going to be analyzing this reference in which um it's a uh, monochrome so we are going to be painting this reference as a grayscale in grayscale so first of all what you're going to be doing is i'm going to be marking the darker sides of the photo which is the first darker color which is our dark shadow i'm going to be indicating the dark shadows with the number one then the second dark shadow with the number two then so basically this is what i'm going to be doing right now i'm going to be just identifying the dark shadows with the numbers so the first dark shadow is the number one then the second dark shadow is the number two um so the the more i go down with the numbers the more the color decreases the intensity of the color decreases so as we all know grayscale is practically gra um, black and white so um, when you go down with the numbers um, assuming we are going from black um, so when you go down on the scale of one to five it's going to give us like a pure white color so the third color it's gonna be that that's gonna be the color in between them which is the gray color which can serve as our base color so don't be confused i'm going to be laying out laying down um our color palette which will serve as a guide for you to understand how the the values how the values are placed on the face so before you shade, you just need to analyze your reference to know where the shadow lies and where the highlights are. So the same thing um, is going to be applied on other references as well. So yeah, I'm going to still identify the shadows and the highlights on the reference. So let me just speed up the video and yeah. So we're done identifying the we're done identifying the base color, the shadows, and the um, the shadows, the first shadow, the second shadow, and the base color. So what we're going to be identifying with the blue colors, which is the fourth color, is our highlight. Our highlights. Our highlights are located around the forehead, around the cheek side, and uh, basically around the forehead and the cheek side as you can see the intensity of the light is balanced is is focused at the left hand side at the left hand side that's where the light is coming from so just make sure you study the um the direction of the light make sure it's very important to study the direction of the light and where the light is bouncing on so yeah as you can see it's not all the areas it's not but all um the areas by the right that the light is bouncing in there are some selective areas that are still dark uh, regardless of it being and uh, regardless of the light coming from the right at uh, the left hand side so yeah um we are done identifying the highlights and i think uh, this reference um supposed to have more than one highlight so we're going to be adding an additional highlight which is a pure white whitish color which will serve as our highlight a pure whitish color which will serve as the highlight but before that i'm going to like lay down our color palette according to the reference we're working on so for this one um as i've said no our number one is a pure dark color that's the first darker tone then the second is um the slightly dark tone then the 
Second, uh, the third, sorry, is our grey color, which will serve as our um our our um base color. That's the um the base color, the mid tone is also called the mid tone. Then the fourth color is the highlight. As you can see, it's not a pure white based on the how I've, I've picked the color from the reference it's not a pure white but when if you choose to like get um a brighter result you can still add more um, um like an additional color making it a five um making it five color tones so we can choose to like add a number five which is the white the pure white color which will serve as the lighter color highlight also as well so we are going to be numbering our skin tones we're going to be numbering our, our palettes the first one is dark color the second is the second dark color dark shade then the third one is the mid tone or you can also call it the um you can also call it the uh, beast color then the highlights so this pinkish area are the areas in in which are having the brightest color the brightest highlights which will serve as our number five so this is the areas in the reference that is having the lightest uh, color so that's why we're going to be adding a number five, which will serve as our lightest highlight. So, but if you think the already picked up highlight is okay for you, then that's fine. But as of this reference, I think the highlight should be uh, should be uh, comprising of two different whitish colors. The the more the light color and the more lighter color just as the darker tones are have are comprises of two darker tones this reference is comprising of two lighter tones as well so yeah we are going to be adding a fifth lighter tone which is our white color So since we're done analyzing the reference, and the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to actually paint this reference using grayscale. We're actually going to be identifying and placing the colors where necessary. So what we're going to be doing is, since I've already done a rough sketch and I've laid down, it's very, very important. And uh, note this, guys, um, whenever you are sketching, uh, most especially you are a beginner, don't worry about getting a clean sketch. Um, that is when you practicing a shading. It's good to have a clean line art. Don't get me wrong, but when you are trying to like, um, when you're having hard times um, identifying the area in which you're going to place your shadows, it is it's advisable for you to um, give yourself like a clue or um, a tip on where to place your highlight as you can see there there is a rough um idea or a sketch around the corners of the f like giving it the form um like the form of the face 
as you can see i've given it like some strokes just to identify the area in which the dark darker tones are um located so it's advisable for you while you're sketching to like sketch out the area in which your your darker shadows and your highlights are placed you can just make sure it's on a different layer then when you're done placing the shadows and the highlights then you can clean it up so it's another tip for um beginners to identify the areas in which the highlights and the shadows are um without stress so yeah it's it, this is one of the tips so make sure while, while sketching you you also sketch out the area in which your highlights and the shadows are placed then when you're done with your shading you can just clean it up so yeah um so now i'm just placing the base color i'm just trying to like place the um, base color and block them block the colors in So yeah, um, we're done blocking in the colors. What up next we're going to be doing is um, uh, uh, shading. So we've picked up the black color. So for instance, um, just in case you're using a Photoshop, um, using a different software, probably Photoshop or Autodesk Sketchbook, I would advise you to use a similar brush that will give you like a faded end and also a thick end. Uh, one side a faded end then another side a thick end so just like a soft round brush and you um sorry um a hard round brush sorry and you can get a hard round brush then um yeah you can get a hard round um soft round brush sorry and you can also get a color builder there are substitutes that will give you the same results to this and make sure the brush is having a sensitive and um, pressure sensitivity so that you can um slightly increase the intensity of the shading shadows while you're placing it as you can see um it's building up as you place the colors they are building up it mustn't necessarily um you mustn't necessarily uh, reduce or add opacity but you can still add opacity or reduce if you like but this brush the beauty of this brush is the more pressure you the more pressure you apply on this brush the more intensity um and thickness it gives so yeah um what we are doing is we are placing the uh, trying to identify the darker shadows by the left hand side so just make sure you make your your you make your your reference very close to your make sure you keep your reference very close to uh, what you're working on just to like make it more easier for you to like identify them and also to make it more easier again is to, by the sketching of earlier said that it's um advisable for you to please your your sketch your rough sketch of where the shadows and the highlights are so that when you're working on it it's going to be very easy for you to like please them where they are exactly so yeah we are starting off with the darker um, shadows and we're trying to like um, even them out and please them where they're supposed to be and also at the same time i'm using my cleaner um, eraser sorry i'm using my eraser to like clean up the mess um just in case it's going out of place then i'm trying to like control the shape and yeah the form of the shape of the um of the shadow so yeah um, as well controlling the form of the face by cleaning and giving it that 
um sheep that had sheep um yeah as you you can all see is um the reference we're working on is having a lot of catch cast shadow on it so yeah you can um you can show the the sharpness of the edge of the the intensity of the the shadow by cleaning it up with an eraser so just in case you want to get a hard edge you can just clean it up practically clean it up with an eraser after just placing them you can still clean it up and also i'm using the blend blending tool to like blend the colors after roughly placing them um, as you can see in the neck area at the neck area i'm placing the color roughly just i'm just i'm just placing the color roughly so i'm using the um the blending tool to like blend so this is um, just practically what i usually do on other software on auto on autodex on photoshop on other software you can just use other software to do the same thing so yeah it, uh, i don't think software does matter the only thing you need is a skill for now you only need the skill um like the shading skill so when you um when you are uh, already good at shading you can practically use any software you want to use so yeah i'm just placing the shadows at the right uh, the, the left hand side i'm just trying to like get that intensity of the cast shadow just in case you think the shading is the shadows are too light you can you can duplicate the layer or you can just choose to in, um, add pressure to your your finger or your pencil your pen that you're working on or your stylus you're working on so that to have an intensity of the the intensity or the thickness of the dark the dark tone the dark color so yeah that's um what i'm going to be doing right now so i'm just like placing um where uh, placing the uh, the darker tones the the shadows were necessary.
so yeah we are done placing the shadows um i'm done placing the shadows where necessary so up next what we're going to be doing is selecting a white uh, white color then just using um applying it slightly on the on the forehead that's on the forehead and where necessary um just make sure you study the reference and know the direction of the light so i'm just like applying it and also um as you can see i am making it more thicker by the side of the cheek because there is a a cast shadow beside the nose so there's a intensity of light that is bouncing by that side through that side and also at the forehead so make sure you just monitor how the lights are bouncing on the subject just to like uh, make it more easier for you to um, replicate replicate the reference and also to identify where to place the reference and uh, the colors sorry the highlights and the sh shadows so yeah this is all about this tutorial just make sure you stick around and see how i um apply this and apply this knowledge to the second reference so i'm going to be doing the second reference as well so just make sure you stick around and also you can still practice uh, using the same reference i have the reference um the link to the references um is in the description box um just in case you want to practice and follow along you can download the reference in the description box the link is in the description box um you can get the reference in my in my pinterest board and yeah just you can free uh, it's it's free you can just go and download it and make sure you tag me on instagram um using i'm using the same name uh, that i use on youtube so yeah you can tag me on instagram to see your your um yeah your study and i i i could give you critique and how where to improve and how to improve so yeah this that's all for this video so you can still stick around and i'm going to be giving some little tips as well so i'm not done with this video so i'm just going to mute for now okay guys here's another tip so just in case you're using multiple like two dark tones when you're using two dark tones on your reference and you're kind of finding it it's hard to like work with two dark tones like dark shadows what you're, what, what you're going to do is um the easiest way to go about it is uh, make sure you make um work with them on a different layer like the first sh um shadow the first uh, type of shadow should be on a different layer then the second type of shadow um like the second shadow dark shadow um that's the dark tone should be on a different layer so when you're done shading um the darker side and also the dark side then you can merge it together so this is just like a, an easier way to go about it. So just in case you've been struggling with the cast shadow, that's the darker tone of the the that's the darkest tone of the reference, which is the cast shadow around that neck side. Just in case you want you're struggling and placing the darker tones, what you're going to be doing is just make sure it's on a different layer. Then you apply it. When you're done applying it, then you blend it. Then you merge it with the initial dark shadow you've been working on already so and also um before you um, shade your reference you as you can see from the beginning i just like layer down the area in which the the, the shadows are and also i leave the area in which the light the highlights are so the practically the light is coming from the left hand side so the obviously the shadow should be 
around the right hand side so make sure you lay down some foundation of the shadows just make sure you just roughly lay down the foundation of the shadows on a different layer then blend them just to like have that kind of contrast and um, construct um, sorry contrast and also that kind of gradient gradient um flow on the reference like more like a foundation on the gra like a more like a gradient look just to like lay foundation on what to work on just to have foundation on what you're working on sorry and so yeah just it's advisable to like have a gradient um foundation uh, it's me mustn't necessarily be on your layer of shadows but it should just be on different layer just like give you the idea on where to place your darker tones and highlights as well so yeah uh, it's good to like start off with a gradient feel um gradient foundation just like um differentiate the area where the shadows are and the highlights are as well so yeah this is another tip so i'm going to be showing you another tip as well to go about the shading and also how to change your um your monochrome or uh, sorry the how to change your uh, black and white uh, which is the grayscale painting into a colored painting in this same video so just do well to stick around to the end of this video And another advice I'm going to be giving you is try to pay less attention to um, detailing at first. Just pay less attention to details at first. Just make sure you just lay down your shadows and highlights where they are supposed to be. Then after you're done placing the highlights and the shadows where they are, then you can still go back to see if it's giving this, um, the right resemblance or it's giving the right details it just check out w whether the, the details are where where placed um so you can readjust whatever you want to readjust but make sure you just concentrate on the big shapes and concentrate on the form of the face and just make sure you uh, replicate that form of the face and also the shadow the core shadows and the highlights and where they are casted so yeah this is just another tip just make sure you focus on the the repli replicating the the shadows and just place them where they really are and just forget about placing high um details just forget about the detailing and make sure you just place the highlights where they are when you're done placing the highlights and the shadows where they are then you can focus on um detailing giving it details so yeah
so here we're done with the shadows uh, what we're going to be doing is highlighting we're going to be placing the highlights roughly on the feet on the um left hand side so yeah as you can see i am bothered bothered less on the highlight because i'm just placing it roughly um i'm just i'm just using um, my knowledge on the intensity of the direction and intensity of the lights on the reference so i'm just i'm just playing with the in um opacity uh, the sorry the sensitivity of the brush make sure you apply more pressure where the um areas are brighter and apply rest less pressure where the highlights uh, the intensity of the highlights are are, are more or uh, less so yeah and also when you 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 are done placing the highlights roughly just to give a gradient feel you can blend them um afterwards then um give it more form and detail so after placing it roughly like this you can just select your blending tool and just blend it as i am doing right now so i'm just blending it and make sure all these things are on a different layer make sure your highlights and the shadows and the uh, mid tones are on a different layer so just to be on the safer side and to have a clean work so as you can see i'm just blending it i'm just dragging it and placing it where um it's supposed to be and where it's not supposed to be i'm just dragging it and give having control of the colors i've placed already So after I'm done placing the highlights, I can now dive into giving it more detail and more um, form. I'm, I'm diving it into giving it more details on intensity of and giving the highlights more intensity on the areas in which are, are lighter and giving less attention to the areas that are less lighter so yeah this is the the time in which i um give it more give details more attention like i'm just trying to like give more attention to details so this is just the advice i've um, recently give given in the beginning of this video like careless about um details at first then care more about details at the end while rendering so yeah this is just uh, basically all about shading using the um, grayscale using the um, black and white colors so this is just the best way to practice shading and the best way to know to improve your shading skills and to study references so yeah i've done also uh, um, other videos on how to sheet and how to sheet realistically and how to sheet re real um semi-realistic references and also monochrome as well and i've done a, a video on how to use colors and the rest so if you're interested you can still go to my videos and check them out so yeah just make sure all you're doing are on the new layer so just to avoid mistakes and the rest so yeah so just in case you haven't followed me on any social media platform i'm using the same name on all my social media platform so just make sure you go check it out so and also i'm i've ex emphasized on the brush i use i just used a, a particular a, a one brush for this tutorial i use a particular brush for this tutorial which is the um hard brush so just in case um you've been wondering what brush i use i use the hard round brush so and you can get the hard round brush in the and on autodex sketchbook you can get hard round brush on 
clip studio friends you can get hard round brush on krita you can get hard round brush on photoshop you can get hard round brush on ebis paint x so you don't have any excuse on brushes just you can just get it it's a default brush it's a default brush so you can get it any in any of this set of softwares so what you're going to do is just make sure you use your blend um uh, you use your blend brush to like blend and make it faded so ju just to have that grand gradient feel and to um, give it a uh, more uh, dimension and form so yeah as you can see it's all related to the combo i've already laid down uh, by the side so yeah up next we are going to be seeing how we can convert this already laid down gradient and our drawings into a grid a, a sorry a colored um painting so i'm going to be showing you how to convert two i'm going to be showing you two steps on how to convert your grayscale into color painting so as i've um already done on a more detailed i've already done a more detailed video on how to do this i'm practically i made my I made my uh, mid tone layer to be on alpha lock and made all my layers to be on alpha lock. Then I selected a color, a skin color, just random skin color, and applied the color while my layers are on alpha lock. Just you can easily do that by putting your layers on alpha lock, then apply individual colors and individual. Um, color palette just make sure you have a color palette that matches what you want to use for um use um what you want the reference reference to look like so yeah i i just randomly picked and experimented the colors i want to use for the highlights for the shadows and for the uh, mid tones so yeah um yeah this is the result i think it's t it's turned out very nice and and since i'm just doing it for a tutorial so i think it's pretty looking nice and it's still showing the form and showing the difference between the highlights and the shadows as well so i'm going to be showing you another um example another way in which you can convert um your grayscale painting into uh, a finished colored painting so yeah the another method is yeah another way of doing it is uh, make sure you copy the entire layer make sure you copy your entire reference on a div on a new layer you can do that on photoshop by clicking alternate shift um i think alternate um shift control e i think so control alternate shift e it's going to merge everything on a new layer it's going to merge everything on a new layer so this is what we're going to be doing on procreate so i'm going to be merging all the painting and make sure you turn off transparency um uh, turn on turn on transparency sorry then copy the canvas then paste it on a new layer as i've done right now so when your new layer is already uh, when your the whole of your layers are placed are uh, pasted on a new layer so you just have control of uh it on it just you just have control of the entire shading process and the highlights on a particular layer then make sure you put it on clipping marks and make sure a new sorry make sure a new you create a new layer at the top then um make sure you apply a clipping max then go to your blending mode and change it to a color so just in case you are into smudge painting or something like that you can still um you do the same process you do over here just make sure you apply the color um effect to the whole um the whole painting then boom it's going to be showing you um the entire um grayscale 
it's going to be showing you that the entire grid scale is colored already so yeah this is just a, another way and you also in photoshop you can use gradient mat map sorry to convert the grid scale into colored painting so you can practically use so there are so many tutorials out and also i've done a tutorial on how to do this uh, actually so yeah uh, you can also check it uh, check more tutorials on how to do reg um do this particular uh, method um conversion sorry you can use any other software to do this conversion and you can follow the same process i did on this and who noticed that who noticed any of you noticed that the color palette i've even created as a grayscale has already turned automatically into a colored palette so and also you can use you can also do some surface scattering and also for some variation of skin tones and add some blush by the cheek and add some just to make it more realistic you can add some greeny color and the pinkish color on the face just like make the fish look face look much alive so yeah this is all for this video if this video was helpful please don't forget to subscribe um do well to give me a thum thumbs up if you like this video and also share with friends that are into art and they love art you can share share my links to friends share my videos to friends as well so yeah um if you're having difficulty on any process of this video just let me know in the comment section the comment box and also you can chat me up on my social media platform and say hi and we could chat and let um, me know your issues and your problems so i'm going to be giving you um, solutions to any of your problems as well so yeah if this uh, video was helpful please don't forget to comment down below and let me know as well so thank you guys for watching see you in my next video bye